I want to acknowledge that we meet on the land of Aboriginal people and pay my respects to elders past and present. We are very fortunate in this country to have two of the world's oldest continuing living cultures uh, in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people whose lands, winds and borders we all now share. Uh, there are a few other people I'd like to acknowledge today. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Mark Bailey. Uh, Mark, good to see you. Uh, we want to acknowledge uh, uh, the Honourable Coralie O'Rourke, um, the Honourable Shannon Fenneman. Uh, and in doing so, uh, in acknowledging Shannon, I just want to also highlight something which uh, is something we're very proud of in this government. And that is that uh, this is the first budget, uh, women's budget statement we've had uh, in 20 years. Uh, and I, I put a lot of that down to the hard work that Shannon has been doing in the portfolio. Uh, the last time we saw one of these statements was uh, when uh, Joan Sheldon was the treasurer. Um, and you know, obviously women are going to be better treasurers than blokes anyway. Uh, and uh, it was a reason why we saw all of that information as to what is happening around government being brought together. So in acknowledging Shannon, I also want to acknowledge uh, the great work that she's been doing uh, in that part of the portfolio. Uh, for more than 50 years, QCOS has been the uh, most significant voice for social change in this state. I believe that the collective of uh, what happens with uh, QCOS uh, is something very powerful. And uh, I look around the room and see a lot of people from various uh, community organisations, uh, non-government service providers, and people who are advocates. Uh, and I know that the work uh, that QCOS does uh, really is representative of the collective work that is trying to be undertaken. Uh, so thank you for the crucial role that uh, QCOS, its board and all of the people involved uh, make in the community sector here in Queensland. As you've heard, uh, on Tuesday I headed down the Palaszczuk Government's second budget. But this budget uh, is one that I think uh, we can all be very, very proud of. Um, there is no doubt that our government is one that is committed to developing and supporting our communities. Uh, we have increased the budget this year for the Department of Communities, Child Safety and Disability Services to $3.2 billion. That is an 8.8% .8 increase on last year. Out of the $53 billion budget, we're providing $4.9 billion of concessions. Uh, we're doing what we can to help with the cost of living. And we certainly have retained our commitment uh, to continue to cover the shortfall uh, for concessions affected by uh, what has been a very uh, long process in dealing with the uh, federal government in terms of the National Partnership Agreement on pension concessions. Our three eyes of growing innovation, uh, attracting investment and building infrastructure are all aimed at creating jobs uh, now and also jobs in the future. And that's really what's important uh, when we start talking about how we've uh, applied our funding in terms of infrastructure and our uh, job creation programs. That's because we've got a very strong focus, again, on regional Queensland. We have a $100 million regional back-to-work program, which we hope will support around 8,000 jobs in our regions. If, if you're an employer, uh, we're going to be giving you up to $10,000 if you hire and keep a regional Queenslander employed for 12 months. If you hire a long-term unemployed person, uh, we'll be upping that to $15,000. And we're going to have a strong focus on, on ensuring people uh, from uh, culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, uh, young people, uh, and mature uh, aged workforce people will be able to come uh, through our programs and we'll be giving a very strong emphasis on ensuring that they get the best outcomes. But what we have of course got to do is look at the fact that we have uh, a reality, we have lower demand for the uh, uh, resources that we produce and we get lower prices for them as well. Uh, and that means loyalties are going to be lower than forecast. Uh, we have been very you know, clear last week when we talked about the fact that we're experiencing $4.7 billion of write-downs uh, across the forward estimates since the last budget. So what is important though is what you do in response to those situations and what your priorities are and that's what we're here today to talk about. Uh, we have put a big, big significant uh, priority on the community <coughs> sector on delivering uh, with our non-government partners to ensure that vulnerable Queenslanders and Queenslanders who need our support are getting uh, that support from the government and that is what people expect. So I want to take some time to talk about some of the initiatives in the budget, uh, initiatives that are having a real impact uh, on families. This is a, a budget that delivers for health. Uh, we have record funding of $15.3 billion, a 4.3% increase, $230 million for advancing Queensland's health infrastructure program. That includes money uh, for repurposing the Nambool Hospital. Uh, and of course, there are other hospitals in the region of Queensland, including at Atherton, as well as at Thursday Island. 
There's another $167 million to prepare the Sunshine Coast University Hospital for opening in April next year. It is a budget that delivers for education, with record funding of $12.9 billion, a 5.9% increase. We have a new state school building program of almost $250 million over the next four years to increase the base capital works program and also to meet growing demand. And we, of course, have also put in place a uh, school maintenance uh, fund at last year's budget. We've topped that up with an additional $94.7 million so that we can ensure that we have uh, the sorts of facilities that our kids need uh, to grow and prosper. We've made sure that we are continuing to cut the cost of living for Queenslanders. Uh, you would have heard uh, announcements made uh, on the weekend about our um, cheap fares for public transport. But right now, uh, anyone who catches public transport realises there is a maze of zones. There's 23 zones. Uh, we're scrapping those from January next year and bringing them down to just eight zones. A lot easier to remember, but importantly what it's going to mean is lower fares across all zones. And as part of this uh, process, we've considered uh, how we can help our families. And we've got all kids under 15 with a go-kart travelling free on weekends. And we have new concessions, of course, for job seekers on Newstar as well as asylum seekers. Uh, we need to make it as easy as possible for people to get uh, where they need to go, whether it's to get to training, uh, to get to their uh, medical appointment, uh, particularly for pensioners. We have to ensure that we are giving as many of those opportunities as we can, and government is doing what we can to assist. Uh, this is a significant uh, initiative uh, for residents in South East Queensland. Uh, for those people like me who don't live in South East Queensland, uh, we're also maintaining the fare structure uh, and freezing across the state over that time as well. Uh, we know that uh, whilst the patronage is a little less in regional Queensland, uh, we recognise that people uh, sometimes have no other option except to catch public transport and that means a lot to them, uh, as I say, when they're trying to get themselves uh, prepared for work uh, where in fact if they're able to secure a new job. Now a very important thing to I think everyone in our community and I know obviously uh, everyone in this room, and that is uh, what our budget is doing to address and continue to respond to the Not Now, Not Ever report uh, when it comes to uh, battling the uh, scourge in our community of domestic and family violence. We've increased funding uh, in this budget by almost $200 million. We've had great success with the new Specialist Domestic Violence Court at Southport, and we've put more than $40 million of new funding to roll out uh, those courts across Queensland. We're putting more money and resources towards supporting victims of domestic and family violence. And we're building two new shelters for women and children escaping domestic and family violence. The government is partnering with Good Shepherd uh, Microfinance to open good money shops at the Gold Coast and in Cairns. Now, they provide uh, small, zero interest loans for people who basically need life essentials. Uh, it is a safer alternative than high interest payday lenders. And it's part of the $25 million financial resilience plan that we announced in last year's budget. This program is now being redesigned and enhanced. It's going to be including new counselling positions uh, to continue emergency relief and further financial literacy initiatives. But just a point on that, uh, I think uh, people's uh, financial literacy should never be under, understated. Uh, I mean, I'm doing a budget this week, I'm handing out a budget, it's not a household budget, it's a $53 billion budget. But the point is, uh, understanding um, you know, your incomings and outgoings, and uh, of course, uh, understanding how you can make the best use of that is still critical. And uh, I do think that uh, if we particularly have that focus uh, and in schools, ensuring that young people have that financial literacy, uh, it will make, help them make those decisions they need to uh, to help them to become better adults uh, in the future. But uh, everyone in our community can use that support, budgeting support, uh, and uh, then we can get a real idea about how we can best help as government and non-service providers in the community sector. Uh, the support that we provide our communities, of course, includes the statewide rollout of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, which starts from 1 July. And this is eventually going to support uh, around 90,000 Queenslanders with a disability. Last month, we also legislated the commencement of the National Injury Insurance Scheme uh, for Queensland. This scheme provides uh, access to uh, lifetime care and support for all Queenslanders who are catastrophically injured uh, in road accidents. Uh, I'm sure Minister Bailey will agree, uh, as a Minister for Road Safety, uh, that uh, the best thing we can do is prevent people having those catastrophic accidents in the first place, and it's an ongoing work of our government. But for those people who uh, are catastrophically injured on their roads, uh, there is now uh, a complete no-fault scheme which allows all people 
have the care and support that they deserve as a result. Um, they'll no longer have to prove that it was someone else at fault. So this week, of course, the government introduced legislation to extend this scheme to people who are catastrophically injured at work. Uh, and that's going to be a, a, a similar uh, debate in the parliament, but one that I have no doubt will have the support of all members of the parliament. Before I conclude today, I just wanted to give uh, you all an update on one of the most important social initiatives that we introduced uh, at last year's budget, and it's social benefit bonds. <coughs> social benefit bonds uh, are our government's response to tackling some of the really challenging social issues. Uh, and it has been suggested to me that, uh, you know, was this a case of the government putting up the white flag? You can no longer deal with these uh, particularly challenging issues. Uh, and I don't think that's the case at all because I'm here today with a room full of people who are absolutely passionate and dedicated to delivering uh, and dealing with complex social issues to support vulnerable Queenslanders. Uh, but we think that we need to try new and innovative ways to um, tackle all these things. And this is about attracting private investors uh, to support these uh, complementary services uh, to the ones that all of you are already delivering. These bonds are basically a, an agreed social outcome uh, and no outcome, um, uh, if no outcome is achieved, we actually don't pay the people who have made the investment. There is a financial incentive to deliver it, but in the process we hope that we get an excellent outcome uh, and we can cut through uh, and find new and diverse ways of delivery. We think that a measurable dif a difference will be there for people in the community participating in the pilot services. Uh, we announced pilots in three areas, in homelessness, uh, in reoffending, and also in improving Indigenous outcomes. Earlier this year we called for formal uh, expressions of interest. We received 23 submissions. Uh, we've re-evaluated, uh, evaluated, gone out to a market sounding exercise, the request for proposals, all of that process has been undertaken. So we anticipate uh, now that this process we will see the first social benefit of uh, operating by next year. Uh, this is a faster time frame that some other jurisdictions have been able to implement. And it's probably because we've been able to benefit from other jurisdictions putting their toe in the water first and seeing what worked and what hasn't. Um, this is something I'm very passionate about because, uh, look, not just as Treasurer, because there may be cost savings to government to have more money to deliver across more services. But it is something, we, uh, if we do it right, will completely uh, revolutionise the way that we deliver services uh, as a um, government and as a non-government sector. Uh, increasing those partnership opportunities. And I think uh, in the outcomes uh, are going to be uh, those that are only uh, financially paid for when they're met, but those agreed outcomes are going to be quite tough. Uh, we think that there's a good outcome here for the taxpayer, but particularly for the people who will be receiving these services. Uh, can I just, uh, in summing up, say that this has been a budget uh, framed in difficult times, uh, but as I always say, uh, budgets are about people making choices uh, and it's about your priorities. We think the budget builds on our strength. We think the budget shows that we're a government that has a heart uh, and we know that we've got to continue to support uh, vulnerable Queenslanders who don't want handouts, they just want a hand up. And if we can continue to have that as our focus uh, and ensure that we continue to engage with QCOS and with uh, all of our non-government providers uh, to tell us how we're doing with our mission of uh, working hard on behalf of all Queenslanders, we think that we're going to be able to continue to deliver good outcomes for you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me here today. I understand I'll be answering some questions, so I uh, look forward to uh, hearing from you as well. Thank you.